So for our last session of the day, we are going to have a trivia competition, and you all are going to be playing along with the other members of your table. To tell you more about the game, the rules of play, the prizes, I'd like to call to the stage our host, John Stossel. Should be a familiar face to all of you. Uh, John, as, uh, as you all know, is a consumer reporter, co-anchored 2020 for some years, um, now hosts Stossel on Fox Business. Um, he's also the author of No They Can't, Why Government Fails But Individuals Succeed, and we're really excited to have him leading us through this trivia game this afternoon. John? So you're competing by table. You should know that. So uh, if you've got a table with two people, you're at a disadvantage. You may want to pile up. If you have stupid people at your table, you may want to leave. <laughs> While you think about that, I just wanted to add a few comments from today. Um, I, I wanted to add, I thought about what Andy Puzder was saying to a questioner over here, over here actually, but how do we encourage honesty in business and what can be done? And what I would have added to his answer is that, look, if you don't have crony capitalism, if it's a real free market, the only way to do really well is to be honest. If you treat your employees well, more people want to work for your company. The way to get really rich is to serve your customers well. And Adam Smith understood the invisible hand encourages people to be honest and fair. The other point about insider trading that he brought up, how we thank goodness for the SEC, but the problem is they tilt. I got to wonder, in the age of the internet, why do we need an SEC? No one can define what insider trading is anymore, or if they ever could. Um, with the internet, the information gets out, the, the cheaters get found out and punished, and government will always tilt whatever agency is in charge. And last point, people always ask me about the presidential election, what do I know, and I know nothing. And the pundits basically know nothing. But you as business school students should know that nothing predicts better than the stock market, the prediction markets. In America, because politicians are scared of gambling, they banned the stock market. They banned insurance business. They banned the commodities markets. And they fortunately are legal again, but they have banned prediction markets. The best one that's left is Betfair in, uh, in England. And I've, if you go to a, on your phones to electionbettingodds.com, you'll see our conversion of it so Americans can understand it. And as of five minutes ago, Trump is down 2%. Rubio's up 7% just today. But Trump is still leading for the Republican primary at 49%. So that out of the way, let's go to the contest. So each table will compete, 20 questions. You're going to use the eye clickers. Uh, the winners, the top three teams, will move on and compete in a final round. You'll pick a captain for the final round. The team members have to be uh, current Adam Smith Society student members, so no sponsors or ringers allowed. Um, no smartphones. No unethical behavior will be tolerated. Staff will circulate to uh, try to handle any difficulties with... Uh, with the clicker and monitor phone use. The prizes, $100 Visa gift card, plus the team captain and deputy will also receive free tickets to the Manhattan Institute's Black Tie Alexander Hamilton Dinner here in New York on May 9th, which honors Harvey Silverglade, a civil rights litigator and the founder of FIRE, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. A found fine group, also Bruce Kovner, founder of CAM Capital and chairman of the board of the Juilliard School, an opera nut. OK, first round. Each table has this the eye clicker. Please pick it up and turn it on. The letter A should blink twice. Is that clear enough for you MBA students? Molly, how do we know if? Uh, Anybody have anybody having trouble? The, if you're having trouble, raise your hands. So after I read the question, 
and, the, and there'll be answer choices, your team should deliberate and enter your answer on the clicker. You'll have 30 seconds after I've read the questions to deliberate. A timer will be on the upper right-hand corner of the screens. You may not change your answer once it's entered, and the system will not permit you to answer a question once time has run out. The clicker will light up green if your answer is recorded. If it lights up red, time ran out, or there's a problem with your clicker. Uh, raise your hand and the staff member will assist you. Now let's go for a practice round, answer the question on the screen to test your clicker. Which company owned by, is this the first, no, what's today's date, sorry, is the question. And I won't bother to read them, you can see them on the screen to test your clicker. You see the timer ticking down, and so 17 is the total tables. Go start. All right, first round, on to the questions. Which company owned by Jeff Bezos successfully tested a rocket and spacecraft that reached the edge of space and returned to Earth? SpaceX, Amazon Space, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic. All right, one team didn't make it, but the answer is C, Blue Origin. SpaceX is owned by Elon Musk. Next question. On his mother's side, Frederick Hayek was second cousin to which? Who knows these things? <laughs> to which Austrian-British philosopher who penned the book Philosophical Investigations? Wittgenstein, Bertrand Russell, Ludwig von Mises, Karl Popper. Time's up, the correct answer is A, Ludwig Wittgenstein. <laughs> Next question. What's an asset worth? Should you add it to your portfolio? Harry Markowitz, William Sharp, Morton Miller won the Nobel Prize in economics for their work on the model that's become one of the standard answers. This simple model of valuing both individual assets as well as a portfolio considers systemic risk, the value of a, theoret a theoretically risk-free asset and the time an investor has to work with. What's the model's name? Capital allocation principle, capital asset pricing model, strategic asset allocation, structural asset allocation. I'm glad I'm not in business school. All right, everybody answered this one. The correct answer is B, capital asset pricing model. Move on to, I hope, more interesting questions. Four, <laughs> Volkswagen, which recently found itself in trouble in the US and Europe, one of many makes under the control of the Volkswagen Group, or VWAG. Which of the following car makes is not one of their brands? Bentley, Porsche. Jaguar, Audi. All right, everybody's answered. The correct answer was C. It's Jaguar, which is owned by the Indian conglomerate Tata Motors. Five on... July 5th, 2015, the government of Greece held a referendum to determine whether it should accept or reject a bailout package offered by the European Central Bank. Greek voters rejected the plan. What was the winning margin? Who, who knows these things? <laughs> winning margin for no. A, 51 to 49, 58 to 42, 61, 39, 76, 24. This was the Greeks saying, no, we don't want your filthy money. We just want to keep spending. <laughs> All 
All right, the correct answer is C, 6139. Wow, some of you actually knew. Question six. 2015 saw a new book, new documentary, and new fictionalized film about the former Apple CEO, Steve Jobs. Which actor played Jobs in the film? Directed by Danny Boyle, written by Aaron Sorkin, Ashton Kutcher, Tom Hardy, Michael Fassbender, Michael Shannon. And an ethical question that's not part of your quiz, but Aaron Sorkin just made stuff up about jobs. Is that right? Social media made stuff up about Mark Zuckerberg. So. Uh, correct answer is Michael Fassbender, C. Question seven. Charles Dow first calculated the index, we now know as the Dow Jones average, in 1896. It was composed of just 12 stocks. Just one stock remains. What is it? A, GE, B, U.S. Steel, C, Exxon Mobil, Standard Oil of New Jersey, D, Coca-Cola. All right, time is up. The correct answer is A, General Electric. All the others were added after 1896. Question eight. In 2015, the Fed announced the first interest rate hike in a decade by how many basis points? 10, 15, 25, or 50? Don't say it out loud. <laughs> All the answers tables are in, and the correct answer is C, 25 basis points, quarter of a percentage point. Nine. In the wake of the panic of 1907, remember that? Senator Nelson Aldrich chaired a commission that recommended the creation of the Federal Reserve. Where did they meet? New York City, Washington, D.C., Governor's Island, Jekyll Island. There are all sorts of conspiracy theories about this, too. All teams are in, and the correct answer is Jekyll Island, D. Where is that? It's off North Carolina, I think. Off Georgia. Close enough. Ten. This French economist actively wrote during the French Revolution and the reign of Napoleon. He was a famous proponent and popularizers of Adam Smith's theories. He also devised an economic law which bears his name. It's one of the earliest articulations of supply-side economics. Who was he? Montesquieu, David Ricardo, Frederick Bastiat, Jean-Baptiste Say. My French may not be so good. <laughs> Molly, did you make up these questions? The correct answer is D, Say, and hence we have Say's law, which states that a product is no sooner created than it, from that instant, affords a market for other products to the full extent of its own value, or as we would say it on TV, supply creates its own demand. Eleven. Which former CEO of American Apparel filed a $40 million lawsuit for breach of contract after being forced out due to numerous allegations, which I think are true, of impropriety? <laughs> Don Cheadle, Dov Charney, Thierry Mugler, Terry Richardson.
I interviewed this guy. He was refreshing, actually, and non-politically correct. I liked him. All right, time is up. The correct answer is Dov Charney. B. Now, one table has a clicker issue. Shall we wait? No. <laughs> Cheaters, what about the fairness argument? 12. Including the 2016 election, how many presidential elections have there been? 56, 60, 45, 58. Who cares? <laughs> and wow, a lot of late answers coming in time. Okay. 14 teams get in. Correct answer is A, 58. Question 13, a more reasonable one you might know. Who was the first candidate to drop out of the race this year? Scott Walker, Rick Perry, Jim Webb, Bobby Jindal. Correct answer is Rick Perry, who Avic Roy worked for. 14, on the way to 20, Donald Trump has about 6 million Twitter followers, the most of all the candidates. Which candidate has the fewest, which is better grammar than least, as of February 15th? Bernie Sanders, Hillary, Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush. Okay, all tables are in. The correct answer is D, Jeb Bush, with just 479,000. Hillary has 5 million. Sanders, 1.5 million. Rubio, a little over 1 million. 15, former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley was the inspiration behind which fic fictional politician? Frank Underwood, Leo McGarry, Thomas Carcetti, Jed Bartlett. Okay, everybody's in. Uh, the correct answer is Carcetti, Tommy Carcetti. I'll, I'll read the full answer because it's kind of fun. It's played by Aidan Gillen, who famously plays Littlefinger on the Game of Thrones. He was elected mayor of Baltimore in season four of The Wire, and he goes on to become governor of Maryland at the end of season five. Bartlett and McGarry are played by Martin Sheen and John Spencer in The West Wing. Underwood is portrayed by Kevin Spacey in the House of Cards. 16, aside from Eisenhower, who was the most recent US president never to have held elective office before? Washington, Wilson, Warren Harding, Ulysses Grant. Wow, one table didn't make it. Ulysses Grant, he was in the Army for his prior career. 17. This one's a fun one. Which of the following is not a direct quote from one of Justin, Justice Scalia's dissenting opinions? A, this case involving legal requirements for the content and labeling of meat products like frankfurters affords a rare opportunity to explore simultaneously both part of Bismarck's aphorism, no man should see how laws or sausages are made. 
B, the purpose of Indiana's nudity law would be violated, I think, if 60,000 fully consenting adults crowded into the Hoosier Dome to display their genitals to one another, even if there were, even if there were not an offended innocent in the crowd. C, the court's next bill of interpretive jiggery pokery involves other parts of the act that purportedly presuppose the availability of tax credits on both federal and state exchanges. D, if it were impossible for individual human beings or groups of human beings to act autonomously in effective pursuit of a common goal, the game of soccer would not exist. Scalia was an interesting guy. It's kind of a trick question also. Which of the following is not a direct quote from one of his dissenting opinions? Yeah, just pick one. You're business students. You won't know this. All right, the, the correct answer is B. They're all from all from Scalia, but B came from his concurrence in a case. <laughs> hey, I didn't write these. 18, almost there. Only one U.S. president served at least one full term without appointing a justice to the court. Who was he? John Quincy Adams, Jimmy Carter, John Adams, Theodore Roosevelt. Time's up. B, Jimmy Carter is correct. 19, the last time the Republican Party won a, president, was, won a presidential election without a Nixon or Bush on the ticket, what year? 1924, 28, 48, 52. Okay, everybody's in. The correct answer is 1928. Nixon was Eisenhower's VP, H.W. Bush, Reagan's, and Ford was not elected to the position, if that helps. Final question for the first round. Who referred to Alexander, Alexander Hamilton as that bastard brat of a Scottish peddler? I'm not sure if seeing the musical will help you. Okay, time is up. Correct answer was John Adams. From a letter to Dr. Benjamin Rush. All right, that's the end of the first round. There's a five minute break now. The brilliant staff is gonna tally the scores. Uh, you're supposed to use this time to elect a team captain who will represent your team should you be chosen to move on to the final round, as well as a deputy to accompanied them to the stage, and they must be Adam Smith members. All right, congratulations to the winning tables. You don't, are these in order of how well they did? No. They are table three. Wow, a very small table, that's impressive. Table six, table 17. A big table, okay. So you gotta pick two people, a captain and a non-captain. Uh, I guess just the captain comes up, right? Both of them come up. Well done, Wake Forest guys. Just two of you. Uh, three of you, okay. Uh, so captain sits, deputy stands behind. 
Do we need a clickers? No. Two up here, one will sit, the other, the captain, sits. Okay. Why don't you practice, practice hitting the buzzer just so we know what it sounds like? The first group is Wake Forest. Rice. Rice. Uh, UVA, Darden. UVA. All right. I noticed none of the Ivies are represented here. What does that say? We had some Yale folks at our table, in fairness. <laughs> All right, this is a little more complicated. Um, remember the prizes, $100 gift certificate and a uh, ticket to the Alexander Hamilton dinner. Um, all right, questions this round are not multiple choice, you just answer. I'll read the question, the first team to buzz will have the first chance to answer. Don't buzz in until it's, some of these questions are long until they're finished. Um, look for the question mark, <laughs> it'll tell you it's finished. And then wait for me to recognize you before you give your answer. Uh, each question's worth 100 points. If you answer incorrectly, 100 points will be deducted. And then the question will be opened up again to the other teams. Play will continue for 10 minutes or until we run out of questions, whichever comes first. Okay. You ready? Question number one. The natural rate of unemployment is a combination of frictional and structural unemployment that persists in an efficient expanding economy when labor and resource markets are in equilibrium. The development of this concept by two economists led them to winning the Nobel Prize. One was Milton Friedman. Who was the other economist? I'm not giving you a clue. I'm just... <laughs> no hints for that. Can I? What's her name? All right, time is up, so we'll go on to the next question. Anybody out in the audience know? Edmund Ned Phelps. I never heard of him either. Question two, <laughs> Donald Trump has claimed the art of the deal is the best-selling business book. However, research by PolitiFact finds that the art of the deal is fifth in terms of copies sold. Can you name the titles of two of the four business books that have sold better than Trump's? Boy, Molly, what if this is too tough and nobody has any answers? Okay, we have a guess. Uh, the Intelligent Investor and Good to Great. Wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to press that for wrong. Okay, so the other two teams have a chance. I've actually heard of these books. One is recent. Eight, seven. All right, time is up. The, the other beating Trump books were, were How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and the Steve Jobs book. All right, we've got an easier one here. Question three. Lin-Manuel Miranda's Grammy-winning musical Hamilton was inspired by the 2004 biography of a founding father by this historian and author. Who? I feel pretty good. 
Okay, what's... Whoops. David McCullough? Incorrect. Other guys? <laughs> Six, five. Correct answer is Ron Chernow. Wake Forest is winning by virtue of Oh, yeah. Four. Ron Chernow. All right. Ron Chernow. Famous biography. Four. James Wilson was a 19th century British businessman who entered the political arena to oppose the restrictive corn laws and support free trade. His activism led him to found the newspaper that was devoted to disseminating business news and promoting free trade. The name of the paper. It still exists. And your answer is? The Economist. Yes. A correct answer. Back to zero. In the lead, UVA. Okay, five. Actually, with Wake. Tied with us. We are tied at zero. We're not losing. How many presidents have preceded the winner of the 2016? Too quick. Disqualified for being early. Of the of the 2016 presidential election. Answer is? 44. Other team has a chance. 43. Correct at 43. And I finally mastered the buzzers. Six, Arthur Laffer famously sketched out his eponymous Laffer curve on a napkin to two Ford administration officials who both went on to serve in the Bush administration, name one of the two. Clue, both are considered warmongers. <laughs> Carl Rove. Uh, Wrong. Uh, Seven, six. No second chance. Correct answer is either Dick Cheney or Don Rumsfeld. I knew that one. Seven. Can you beat the market? No, says this respected economic theory. Asset prices continually change to reflect all available information. The principle is a pillar of what economic theory developed, devised by Eugene Fama? Uh, efficient market theory. Efficient market hypothesis. That seems close enough. <laughs> Burton Malkill called it random walk. Eight. What do the letters represent in the over-the-counter stock market NASDAQ? This is pretty obscure, actually. I'm playing that game. Yeah, who knows this one? Okay, the correct answer is the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. If you start a business, come up with something sexier. 
Nine, this man edited the Wall Street Journal editorial page for 12 years before turning it over to Robert Bartley, who would edit it for the next 30. He then went on to write a syndicated column called Thinking Things Over. He won two Pulitzer Prizes. Who is he? They reprint his editorial on, I think, Thanksgiving every year. Out of time, Vermont Royster. Ten, in 1790, this founding father wrote to his son-in-law, Thomas Mann Randolph, with a list of suggested books to improve his education. It included The Wealth of Nations, which he described as the best book extant. What was the name of this founding father? Okay, who's guessing? Uh, founder of the University of Virginia, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. It's a good thing I got that one. UVA rolling along, 11. American economist Robert E. Hall famously divided the study of macroeconomics to two competing schools. The informal names sound more like species of trout rather than groups of disputing economists, yet the typology is popular and economists with diverse outlooks as Greg Mankiw and Paul Krugman all use Hall's terms. Out How did Hall divide the American economics profession? I'll still answer if you want me to. <laughs> uh, that was UVA with the early uh, hit? Okay, well, if they don't get it, at least you can take a shot afterward, but it won't count. It's kind of a familiar term yeah, among economists. <laughs> yeah, sound more like species of trout is a good clue. But three, two, one. Freshwater economists and saltwater economists, freshwater, University of Chicago, saltwater, Harvard, Penn, Berkeley. 12, who first took PayPal public before it was sold to eBay and has gone on to found two transportation-related firms since then? Elon Musk. Correct. You guys are rolling. On the New York Stock Exchange, what's the ticker tape symbol for the Anheuser-Busch company? Go for it. ABB? Uh... Oh, what, what, what answer did you get? A, B, B. No. <laughs> Just wanted to be sure. <laughs> what would you name it if you were the analyst? Uh, B, U, D, Bud. Correct for Bud. <laughs> 14, the Democratic National Con Conventions being held in what city this year? <laughs> yes? Is it Orlando? Uh, not quite right. Can we get a score update? Is it, what's our score? Yes. Denver. Uh, Losing their valuable points. <laughs> we can move on. All right. W.C. Fields said he'd rather be, be uh, on his gravestone. He said, I'd rather be here than in Philadelphia. Oh, and when the Democrats are there, I feel the same way. Uh, in the bags you received during registration, there was a card advertising the launch of a new Adam Smith documentary who stars in and narrates it. Oops. 
<laughs> Clue, he's not an American. <laughs> Clue, he's Scandinavian. Okay, we're running out of time. Johan Norberg. So that's it. We'll, we'll tally it up. Uh, All right. Final tally will be brought to the stage on a card, it says here, in the event of a tie. I don't think that's happening. No. <laughs> there will be a lightning round. Again, you get a hundred bucks yeah, yeah. certificate so and so trip to, to the... Yeah. Black tie dinner, which will cost you a hundred bucks to rent a tux anyway, so you break even. I can't remember if I had two that here. I think I feel like you had a lot of good answers. I honestly missed a couple. I knew the Jefferson one. Hundred for everyone at your table. It's a better deal than that. And then the two people get to go to the Hamilton. And the two people get to go to the Hamilton. Well, it's closer than I thought. Uh, UVA one, congratulations. And this was fun. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Awesome work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>